Hi everyone, and welcome to Diagnosing Linear Expansion Valves, mostly known as LEVs. In this video, we will discuss magnetic LEV operation, how the LEV works, possible failures that you may encounter with the LEV, and also how to use a multimeter to check the resistance of that LEV coil. So Scott, what we're going to do here today is we have a sample of an LEV coil. Okay, and it's magnetic in the sense that there's a pulse 12 volts DC signal being sent to the coil, opening and closing the valve. So I can, can I check that? With well, me? you could measure, it will show you the 12 volts DC signal, but it's not gonna show you the pulse Pulsing. because it's so quick. Right. Okay. All right, and typically when you first power up a unit, you'll hear a tick, 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 yes, tick. exactly. That's really, that's the LEV finding home or finding the fully closed Close position, position, which is its reference point. Okay. Everything else is referenced to that point. Okay. So then the valve returns to its normal open position. Okay. So as far as the operation, that pulsing goes on, opening and closing the motor that's internal. Okay. Okay. So this slides into a, to a motor and it clamps into the pipe to keep it from sliding up and down its body. Oh, uh, okay, that makes because sense. Because if that's allowed to do, um, when, it, when it's loose, it will ride up on the body of the valve and prevent that motor from turning properly, opening and closing the valve. Very interesting. So we always want to make sure that it's properly snapped in. Okay. Um, some of the things to look out for, being that this is open to the atmosphere, you see a, a hole on the top. Yes. And this is loose, not loose, but it's mounted and there's humidity that can get into there. The humidity creates corrosion. corrosion. So oh, the so best way to use to clean the inside of this is mineral. It's, it's a wool uh, instead of sandpaper. You do not want to use sandpaper. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll uh, scratches and stuff. Exactly. In there. And okay. any scratching of the surface, it creates a bedding for dirt. You wouldn't want dirt inside here because it's going to prevent that magnetic field. Okay. All right. Makes sense. So as far as that's really a, as far as the maintenance is concerned, some of the failures um, is uh, you know open winding or shorted winding, winding. and I'm going to have you check yes. uh, or show how to check the resistance value on that on those coils. Okay, so my understanding though, so this is five wires on this particular one. Correct. And we have a common. Which yes. this would be the red. And by the way, the best thing to check this, as you would a thermistor, mm -hmm. is to unplug it off the circuit board. Yes, yep. thank you. And then we can reference that chart on the service manual of the unit that we're working on. Yes, and you right. want to be look, it, it's, the service manual is going to give you a range okay. of ohm reading, but it's also going to give you a range on the temperature. temperature. Because temperature, you need to be in mind, temperature will affect resistance. Okay. So keep that in mind. All right. So what's good? A multimeter to the ohm. Since we have red is our common. Here we are. And then we have we're gonna go red to blue, red to orange, red to yellow, and red to white. So red to blue, we are reading forty-eight point three. Okay. Red to orange, we are reading forty-eight point zero. Red to yellow. 48.2 and red to white we are reading 48.0 also and you can see how those resistance values are so close to very each similar other. exactly right as long as you're within the range given in the service manual you're good to go you're good to go and that's the only way that's really it's the, the one of the simplest components you can check without the system running Okay. Because you can unplug the system and isolate it individually. Now let me ask you this. Yes. Say we unplug the system. We, we know there's a known issue, right? Okay. We unplug it, we test it, and this is good. Okay. So what else could be a fault for that? It could be the motor itself mechanically ceased. Okay. But then that's that's another that's, I know that's that, another process to troubleshooting okay. that. Yeah. But and also the board could be bad if it's not sending. Yes, that. Okay. because if it's not sending that 12 volts um, pulse Pulsing. signal, the valve of course can't work. Okay, so that's a good point. All right, thank you. All right, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.